you can do a lot of things with arrays and scripting. For example, in this example here, I'm using the getChildren function to return all the children of the workspace. So let's take a look. My workspace is right here. And these are the children of the workspace. I have the camera, the terrain, base plate, part, and part. Let's take a look. Here it is, the camera, the base plate, the terrain, part, and part. Just notice one thing, the getChildren method is not going to return the children in the order that you see here. So the order of the elements are going to be random. But it does return all the children of an object that you specify. In this case, it is the workspace. Just for fun, we're going to change instead of the workspace, we're going to return all the children of our game. Let's take a look. So here are the children of our game. From the top, we have the workspace. Oh, there it is. Other than the workspace, let's see what else we have here that we can recognize. For example, you have the chat. Let me see if the chat is still there. There it is. There's the chat. You have the player's service. Here it is, the player's service. And as you go through this list, you're going to see all these objects here listed in here, plus other objects that you don't see here that are listed in here because they are hidden. The getChildren function can be very useful in scripting. Let's take a look at this next example here. We have five different parts here, very colorful parts. They are all inside this parts folder. Now in this script here, I want to change the color of all those five parts. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to declare an array named parts that is going to contain these five parts. To do that, I'm going to use the getChildren function to get all the children of parts. So game.workspace.parts here is my folder part here. And this here is going to return all the children of this folder, which is part one through five. They are going to be stored inside this array named parts. And here I'm using the for in I pairs loop to loop through all the children of that folder. And each time we go through, we're going to change the color of each of those parts to yellow. Let's now run tests and take a look. Ready? Here we go. They all turn to yellow. So that is how you use the getChildren function. And the getChildren function can be very useful in scripting in many ways. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add some more things to these parts. For example, here I'm going to add, uh, let's say if I'm going to add a click detector here. And in here, I'm going to add an attachment. The attachment is the children of part two, but it is the grandchild of the parts folder. Same with the click detector is the grandchild of the part folder. So now let's go back to the script. We're still getting all the children of parts, which means all these parts in here. And instead of changing the color, we're going to print out the part. Let's let me open up the output window and we're going to run test and take a look. The getChildren method only returns the direct children of parts, but it did not return anything that are under the parts. For example, in this case, it did not return the attachment and the click detector. So in order to return everything under parts, including all the children, the grandkids and the great great grandkids of parts, what you need to do is instead of using the get children method, you want to use the get descendants. And this is going to return everything under the folder parts. Let's take a look. And there it is. We have part one, part two. And remember here, part two has a child name attachment so it's printed here and then we have part three part four and then part four has a click detector it printed here and then part five so there you have it guys those are two very important methods in scripting the get children and the get descendants